Hey, good afternoon, everybody. I'm meteorologist Tim Pandages. On this Monday, June the 19th, we've got two tropical areas to talk about. One that's been designated a depression, tropical depression number three, and another tropical wave right behind number three as Invest 93L. So here's the latest tropical headlines for you. Tropical depression number three developed out of Invest 92L earlier today in the main development region. Why that's unusual, we'll talk about in just a minute. There's another robust tropical wave right behind that, Invest 93L, whose odds of developing have just been increased by the National Hurricane Center. And it is unusual to see that MDR activity early in the season. That's typically a hot spot that opens up by by late July through the peak of the season in September, seeing it active in July, in, excuse me, in June, could be a harbinger of a very busy season in the Atlantic Basin. All right, here's how things look with tropical depression number three. We've got a closed center of circulation, right, but we don't have strong enough winds. 35 mile an hour winds need 39 mile per hour winds or greater to be considered a tropical storm and thus getting a name. That next name would be Brett, our second of the season. Now, here's a look at infrared satellite imagery, and this is a 12-hour loop. Why I'm showing you this is because notice at the start how we have some shades of white in there. Those are cold cloud top temperatures. So this is taking a reading of cloud top temperatures. The colder the cloud tops, the stronger the convection or thunderstorm activity associated with it. So we had that burst about 12 hours ago and things are starting to die down a little bit. It's cycling a bit. We'll likely see an increase in convection again as it pushes farther to the west, but that's a signal there of a healthy environment of which it is currently developing and intensifying, albeit a little bit on the slower side, it is developing and unusual in this area of the Atlantic Basin this time of the year. It is no imminent threat to land though. Here's Barbados. It is still over 1,200 miles off to the east there and only moving at 21 miles per hour, which that by the way is a pretty good clip. It'll likely slow down a bit in the coming days and that'll allow it to take more advantage of the extremely warm sea surface temperatures which is another reason why that area is much more active. We'll talk about in a second. But again, no imminent threat to land. I want to put that out there. All right, let's look now at visible satellite imagery because this looks just a little bit more impressive. And we get a zoomed in look here and you can see the cirrus outflow to the north. That tells us that it is ventilating properly. It is not being tilted by wind shear that typically this time of the year in the main development region is present and helps this to become lopsided and falls apart and gets sheared apart. We are not seeing that with this. However, any shear that is being imparted on this system would likely be coming from its sister wave that's just off to the southwest there, southeast there, that may be throwing some shear up above it, but that's about it. Otherwise, it's a very favorable environment in terms of the shear profile. Now, when we look at dry air on water vapor imagery, there is no lack of dry air off to the west, off to the south, to the north, but there's a pretty good moisture envelope here that is shielding the system from ingesting any of that dry air. That would be detrimental to it developing. It would choke it off and it would sputter on out. We're not seeing that at the moment. Is it a possibility of that occurring? Sure. And that could stunt its growth and intensification, but nothing really significant. And also notice that these colors are not like the rust, the orangey colors that would be uh, associated with some Saharan dust or even drier mid-level air. Not really seeing that. This is dry air, but not significantly dry air. All right, let's talk about that main development region. You're going to hear that a lot in the coming days. We call it the MDR. It's just a, an acronym short for the main development region, and it's favored for tropical development, typically late July, August, September, and even into October, when overall the environmental conditions here, we get the peak of the heating of the oceans and wind shear becomes less and overall just a favorable environment that time of the year. But we're seeing it earlier than normal. And a big piece of the puzzle as to why is how warm the Atlantic Basin has been. We're looking at anomalies here, sea surface temperature anomalies, how warm above normal these numbers are for this time of the year. And they're pretty much off the scales here in a large chunk of the main development region off to the west of the Cabo Verde Islands where these two waves are currently located. So there's definitely plenty of uh, environmental fuel, sea surface fuel for these storms to develop in. Where we usually see tropical activity in the month of June comes in the Gulf of Mexico, the far western Caribbean, and the southwest Atlantic. That could still be in play for sure, but we've opened up a whole nother part of the basin a little bit ahead of schedule, meaning there's more area for storms to develop this time of year than we otherwise should see. All right, let's look at the cone. 
Now that it's depression, we do get a cone, forecast cone from the National Hurricane Center for tropical depression number three. Notables here is as it moves to the west, it does intensify. It becomes Brett and then becomes Hurricane Brett by as early as middle of this week. By Wednesday at 7 p.m., winds at 75 miles per hour, putting it at a Category 1. It does head towards the Leeward and Windward Islands by potentially as early as late Thursday night, early Friday morning. A little stronger, too, with this current forecast, up to 80 mile per hour winds. It drifts westwards into the far eastern Caribbean and then potentially threatens Puerto Rico and portions of Haiti and the Dominican Republic far out, not even in the cone yet. We're talking late in the upcoming weekend, early next week. So a lot of time to watch this, but keep in mind, it is not going to be void of impacting land areas for its entire life. It may very well impact land in the uh, longer term here. All right, so let's talk about hurricanes, right? So Hurricane Brett could potentially form here in June. June hurricanes are quite rare. In fact, since 1950 in June, there's only been 16 hurricanes and the last was Hurricane Elsa in 2021. Do you remember that one? Because there are some similarities here with what we're seeing with Tropical Depression 3 and what ELSA did back in 2021 as it developed also in the main development region. Let's compare tracks. So the yellow here is ELSA's track as it looped through the Caribbean, impacted portions of Cuba, and then eventually made landfall in the panhandle of Florida in 2021 in late June, early July. Here is TD3's current forecast track. It only goes out 120 hours. It is currently situated at a little bit higher latitude off to the north of what Elsa was, but it does drift in that same general area. So we'll see what happens here as we go forward in time. Something to keep an eye on. Regardless, we've got plenty of time to watch it. Where it is currently located, we've got a good eight to 10 days out from where it could potentially reach the US. And there's the other, uh, the other uh, wave here, Tropical uh, Invest 93L, has got a little bit more lead time, looking at 10 to 12 days there, if it were to be an impact to the United States. Let's talk about spaghetti plots here, because if you were watching this as things unfolded this past weekend, the models were a little bit split on where this trajectory would eventually end up for TD, what is now TD3. There was much more of a split kind of right down the middle to some looping it off to the north and potential recurve out to the North Atlantic and others that were keeping it pretty much due west heading into the Caribbean. There was a reason for that. OK, now the stronger storms, the models that were indicating it being a stronger system by this point was able to sense a trough developing to the north that would end up pulling a stronger storm to the north and out to sea. However, other models that you see more so are, are leaning this way were saying that the storm will remain weaker for longer, meaning it moves farther to the west and misses that exit strategy to the north. So keep that in mind. It's going to be interesting to see as we go forward in time. Regardless, again, you saw that cone that does put land areas in the area to watch the forecast, monitor it closely as it strengthens to potentially a hurricane by later on in this week and early in the weekend. You've got a good four days out to watch that to get your hurricane preps in order. Let's talk about that other wave right behind TD number three. This is Invest 93L moving at the same speed, only 25 mile an hour winds. And this on, on uh, infrared satellite, is not all that impressive. We've got some clusters of thunderstorms and overall a broad circulation, but nothing really organized. However, what I did mention at the start of this video, the development odds have just been increased for 93 up to 40% chance within the next two days, 50-50 odds within the next seven. Now on visible satellite imagery here, we can see that broad rotation. And this is pretty similar to what 92L or what is now TD3 looked about 48 hours ago. So if it can consolidate that convection, get a close center of circulation and ride pretty much right behind TD3, we could potentially have dual systems out in the Atlantic MDR at the same time in June. So what does the guidance look like on this? Unfortunately, we don't have much in the way of forecast models outputting much on this just yet. The model runs to come this evening and later on tonight will show more, but pretty much doesn't really tell us anything here. One splits off recurving to the north and the other two kind of take it due west. So we'll see how things play out there. A lot more time to watch that one. Regardless, here we go. We've got our lists of names here. We already had our lean earlier this month. Brett is up next and then potentially Invest 93L could strengthen and become our next name, Storm the Third, which would be Cindy. All right, that's the latest on the tropics today. We'll keep a close, uh, close eye on it. You can keep in touch on all my social media platforms, on Twitter, on TikTok, on Instagram, and also on Facebook. We'll see you again tomorrow. Enjoy your Monday.